Level 2 Fitness Instruction Principles of Exercise, Fitness and Health The Principles and Variables of Fitness By the end of this session you will be able to Describe the importance and reasons for a warm up and cool down Describe the physiological implications of specificity, overload, reversibility, adaptability, individuality and recovery. Explain the principles of fit and the principles of modification and progression for each component. And explain how to recognise when and how to regress a training programme. Describe the effect of which speed and intensity has on posture. Describe the effect of levers, gravity and resistance on exercise. And describe the differences between programming exercise for physical fitness and for health benefits. Warm up. Regardless of the type of exercise planned, it should always commence with a structured warm up. The aim is to place the cardiovascular, respiratory and neuromuscular systems in a state of readiness for activity. The objectives are to raise the pulse rate, raise the body temperature, mobilise the major joints and to stretch muscles in an appropriate way, such as dynamic stretching. Types of warm-up Passive warm-up this is where we use some form of external heating, such as a sauna. However, we don't recommend you use this form on its own, as it's not an effective warm-up, it merely raises the core, core temperature. Active general warm-up. This method increases body temperature as the individual engages in activities that involve large muscle groups. This could be the sort of warm-up you do prior to a gym session, five minutes on a cross trainer, followed by some dynamic stretches. An active specific warm-up. Specific warm-ups involve the individual going through basic movement patterns and using the same muscle groups as will later be used in the activity, only at a reduced intensity. For example, football players will do a football specific warm-up prior to a game of football. Cool down. Any program should also include a cool down to avoid blood pooling and to help recovery. The aim is to return the body and mind to the pre-exercise state. The objectives decrease the pulse rate, decrease the body temperature and stretch muscles in an appropriate way such as static stretches and developmental stretches. Training principles. Although every exercise session will commence with a warm up and finish with a cool down, the actual content can vary enormously. However, to gain the most benefit from exercise, you need to consider the principles upon which training programs are based. Specificity. Any change or adaptation in the body's muscles, organs and systems will be very specific to the type of training. To improve running, a training programme should include running. Progressive overload. To evoke an adaptation response, the stimulus must be large enough to challenge the individual. Reversibility. Cessation of the stimulus which caused the adaptation to occur will result in a gradual decline known as use it or lose it. Adaptability. The body will react in accordance with the type of overload to which it is subjected, making it more efficient for any given task. Recovery. Adaptations occur not during the activity, but in the time following it. Therefore, scheduled rest periods are a vital part of any exercise program.
Individuality. For a program to be both safe and effective, the different physiological abilities of each client must be considered. Every client will have a different range of motion, different level of strength, different fitness level. Principles of fit. When deciding whether to progress or regress a training program, we refer to the FIT acronym. Frequency, intensity, time and type. If an individual is finding an exercise program too challenging, then we can, we can regress any of the following. If they're finding an exercise program too easy, we can progress any of the following. Frequency. This is the number of training sessions per week, month or year. The number of times you exercise per week should reflect your current fitness level, the time you have available, any other commitments like family and your goals. Intensity. This is normally monitored using a percentage of one repetition max, RPE, or heart rate. However, there are additional factors which can influence the intensity. For example, lever length. Generally, when we increase the lever length, we increase the difficulty of an exercise. For example, during a lateral raise, if we carry out the exercise with straight arms, the lever is longer, which makes the exercise more challenging. If we bend the elbows to 90 degrees, that shortens the lever and makes the exercise easier. The same applies to a push-up. Push-ups on knees, shortens the lever, making the exercise easier. We take the knees off the floor, increases the length of the lever, making the exercise more challenging. When we increase the speed of an exercise, this also makes the exercise more challenging. Explosive lifts, or increasing the speed on a treadmill when we're running. However, we, we, we must be aware that it becomes increasingly more difficult to maintain alignment and good posture when we increase the speed. Gravity. If we work against gravity, this can also increase the, in the intensity of an exercise, increasing the, the gradient on a treadmill or doing abdominal exercises on an incline. Finally, range of motion. If we're carrying out a squat and we just squat down to a bench, so our knees at 90 degrees, that's going to be less challenging than squatting all the way down to the floor. Time. When planning for cardiovascular training, it is normally measured in minutes, whereas a resistance training is usually measured in reps and sets. Type. Changing the type of exercise or activity performed can be used to both progress and add variety to a program, providing the specificity of the adaptation does not move away from the training goal. For example, changing the aerobic exercise from running to cycling, or changing a resistance exercise from a lateral raise to a shoulder press. Principles of a progressive training program. To avoid any plateaus or decreases in performance, the principles of progression and periodization should be applied. Progression. Overload applied should be sufficient to elicit an adaptation, but it should be gradual and not excessive. If the progression is too excessive, this can lead to overtraining and injury. Periodization. By varying the intensities and types of training in phases or cycles, great improvements in performance can be achieved whilst decreasing the risks of overtraining and injury. Programming exercise for physical fitness and for health benefits. 
Physical activity involves any bodily movement such as walking to and from work, taking the stairs instead of lifts, gardening and doing household chores. For inactive people, there's no doubt that increasing this sort of activity can reduce risk of disease and improve health. Exercise is a type of physical activity that requires planned, structured and repetitive bodily movement with the intent of improving or maintaining your physical fitness, such as cycling, dancing, walking, swimming, yoga, working out at the gym or running. Regular exercise will lead to improvements in health related fitness. Programming exercise for physical fitness and for health benefits. To stay healthy, adults aged 19 to 64 should try to be active daily and should do at least 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity, such as cycling or fast walking, every week, and strength exercises on two or more days a week that work all the major muscles, legs, hips, back, abdomen, chest, shoulders and arms. or 75 minutes of vigorous aerobic activity, such as running or a game of singles tennis every week, and strength exercises on two or more days a week. Overtraining and injury. Any exercise program requires a balance between overload and recovery. Should the overload stimulus exceed the body's ability to adapt, either injury or overtraining may result. The trainer should therefore be alert to the signs and symptoms of overtraining, which can include sudden poor coordination, lack of ability to concentrate, reduction in performance, irritability, oversensitivity to criticism, reported disrupted sleep patterns, general lethargy, and susceptibility to colds and illness. Can you now describe the importance and reasons for a warm up and cool down? Describe the physiological implications of specificity, overload, reversibility, adaptability, individuality and recovery. Explain the principles of fit and the principles of modification and progression for each component. Explain how to recognize when and how to regress a training program. Describe the effect of which speed and intensity has on posture. Describe the effect of levers, gravity and resistance on exercise and describe the differences between programming exercise for physical fitness and for health benefits. For more health and fitness education, visit www.stormfitnessacademy.co.uk